Hey, I remember this. Rectangles, right? The Nintendo 3DS. I sure have a lot of memories with this thing. I originally bought mine the day it went on sale because I was a cheap bitch. Yeah, so the original model launched in like March of 2011 and retail for 250 bucks. Considering I was 14 at the time and didn't have $250 to waste on playing Rayman 3D, I didn't pick mine up until they announced the price cut uh, later that summer. So 3DS was only 250 for a little bit and then, you know, a couple months in they were like, <laughs> okay, uh, never mind, it's 170 now. That was doable for me. I traded in my Nintendo DSi, got a Cosmo Black 3DS the day it went on sale. And uh, ever since then, you know, I just have so many memories of just logging on to the Nintendo eShop and getting all this junk. Whether they were virtual console titles, eShop exclusives, retail games that eventually uh, those were made available on the eShop so you could download like full-fledged retail games to your system. And there were also a bunch of free applications that I downloaded. And this right here houses all of the stuff from my personal 3DS. So yeah, this is, this is my personal one. Uh, I have a lot of 3DSs, uh, you know, a lot that I use for video stuff, you know, like I'll buy games on them and use those systems to record off of for those videos. So, you know, I have a lot of eShop games on another 3DS and, and like a 2DS that I use to capture footage. But this right here, this is the 3DS that uh, has all the stuff transferred over from 3DS, the original Cosmo Black 3DS that I owned, to the red 3DS XL that I upgraded that to. And then finally, I upgraded from the 3DS XL to this, the new 3DS. This was the model released in uh, 2016, I, I believe like around August or September. It came with Super Mario 3D Land pre-installed and uh, two face plates. Uh, they had a Mario one, which uh, just looked like, you know, like any other the fifth graders lunchbox, but it also came bundled with a Mario Maker one. This was based on all the 8-bit sprites of Nintendo characters featured in the uh, Super Mario Brothers art style on Mario Maker uh, on Wii U. And yeah, this is just absolutely beautiful. It looks so cool. It's so unique. I love it. Of course, I was going to pick that over make my 3DS look like I'm a badass fifth grader. But yeah, even though I got a new 3DS XL a little bit after that, I never transferred the contents of this system to that 3DS XL. I just never bothered to. I always liked this one. This is my favorite 3DS system. I just love how it looks. I love how it feels. It feels so premium and just nice and cool, but it's not afraid to have like some color to it. I love it. And yeah, I thought I'd just take a look at the contents inside this system to just see, you know, like, hey, what did I buy on the 3DS throughout its lifespan when I was actively, actively playing it from like 2011 to like 2017. Opening it up here, we are greeted to the eShop folder. That's my spit. Yeah, so I enjoyed organizing my stuff. Uh, Nintendo eventually added folders to the 3DS. This wasn't always here. I believe they added them around 2012 or so. I believe they all they announced this around the time they announced New Super Mario Brothers 2 for the 3DS. Guess what I was more excited for? Holy sh**, the DSiWare folder! Yeah, so I kind of organized things based on the type of game they were, whether they were just like an eShop only game. Uh, these are kind of just full-fledged 3D made for 3DS games, uh, whether they were eShop exclusives or retail games that I downloaded off the eShop. And then we have kind of the older systems. We have the DSiWare folder, NES, SNES, Game Boy, and Game Boy Color. Gotta say, I am interested to see exactly what I bought because I have a very good idea of most of the stuff that I bought on the 3DS back in the day. But, uh, you know, I just, I wanna see it. I wanna see to believe it. Maybe there's something I forgot. But uh, let's go into the eShop folder. Ah, so first thing up is Animal Crossing New Leaf. I remember I bought this just on a whim. It was in the summer of 2013 and New Leaf launched and everybody was playing it. It was huge, or, or at least people that I saw online, you know. Uh, that was during my phase where I didn't want to tell anybody I like Nintendo. So I was kind of alone on this one. So I was pretty much only playing Animal Crossing New Leaf by myself. But uh, I just remember, I think I was just in the mood to play a 3DS game. And uh, if there was any game to download to your system, it was Animal Crossing. I mean, just pop it open, play a little bit, shut it, you're good to go. And I stuck with New Leaf for a couple days, but it didn't really sink its teeth into me. You know, I still definitely played it for a good few hours, but uh, definitely in comparison to New Horizons, I think it was just because, you know, like by the time New Horizons launched in 2020, I just had more 
friends that were, uh, you know, playing Nintendo games right alongside me. You know, pretty much all my friends have a Switch. It was just more fun to kind of keep at it and constantly just open up the game every day. Uh, New Leaf, I stuck with for a little bit, but fell off after like a couple weeks or so. But next up is Mario 3D Land. This was included on this system, pre-installed. Uh, I actually used this as an excuse to play through it again. Mario 3D Land was always kind of my comfort food game. You know, a game that I could always kind of come back to and just blast through 100% it. I've told this story numerous times before, but uh, one thing that I did was uh, I wanted to 100% the game, like fully, without dying at all. And I did that, but you know, that's not to say I didn't die. However, if you play the game and you die, you can just, you know, hit the home menu and exit out and then go back in the game and uh, it'll still say on like your, uh, your data screen that, oh, zero lives lost. And I was just like, well, you know, hey, look at that. I'm a badass. So yeah, I really do enjoy this game. Uh, there's not really a ton about this game in particular because it, it takes so many elements from other Mario games. Kind of comes down to the time it released and just how much fun it was and, and just the overall aesthetic of it, even though the aesthetic isn't all that unique. Uh, it's very kind of generic bubbly Mario, but I don't know. There's something about it that's still very charming to me, and it's just very nostalgic looking back at it and, and just kind of remembering how this was just an exciting time to be a 3DS player because 3D Land came out and then shortly after Mario Kart 7, and it was just this big triumphant moment for 3DS. Throughout the entirety of 2011, like everybody was like, eh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sucks to be you. And then 3D Land came out, sold like crazy. Mario Kart 7 came out after that, sold like crazy. The 3DS actually started to pick up steam. And throughout 2012, 2013, 2014, it was just the little handheld to own. And uh, 3D Land just kind of brings me back to just that, you know, kind of innocent, fun time. Gotta be honest, I'm already noticing that a certain game isn't here, probably because I deleted it because it was so big. Uh, but that's LEGO City Undercover, The Chase Begins. Uh, yeah, I downloaded that game mainly because I, I was just kind of in the mood for like an open world game. And I thought like, oh man, it's on the 3DS, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, I wasn't, yeah, that game just felt soulless and empty on the 3DS. The Wii U game's okay, but... Uh, you know, they had a, uh, side game, a, a prequel story on the 3DS, and, uh, you know, barely any voice acting in comparison, barely any music, it, it was just, it was just empty feeling, when you'd run around the, the open world, uh, you know, you'd have a lot of pop in, it was very slow, you just kind of heard, like, ambient air noise, and maybe, like, some car horns, but it just, it, it just felt very lonely. And uh, yeah, I played that one for a bit. I downloaded that to my system mainly because I just kind of wanted to play like an open world game at, the, at, at a whim, just kind of be like, oh yeah, I want to play, open up 3DS, play, shut it, that kind of thing. Uh, but I believe it was probably very large in file size, so that's why I deleted it, but I already noticed that's not in my folder here. Next up, we have Pushmo, uh, one of the all-time greats. It's really, really saddening to me how Nintendo seemed to just kind of like throw Pushmo off the face of the earth. It's really only exclusive to the Nintendo 3DS eShop and the Wii U eShop, and outside of that, like, it's nowhere. Like, it does have, like, a micro game in, like, WarioWare Gold, but that's it. But yeah, this is such a fun little puzzle game, you know, just about like pushing and pulling blocks to get to the top of each puzzle. Uh, this was just kind of like the beginning of how it really felt like Nintendo was putting so much more effort into their eShop exclusives on 3DS comparative to like WiiWare and DSiWare. When you look at what was being put out on the Wii Shop channel and DSi Shop channel, uh, like those games were so basic and they were just they, they had barely anything to them. They were all kind of like just high score based games. And Pushmo, frankly, could have just been sold at retail. Like it was so high quality. There was so much to do in it. Like it just felt like Nintendo had a higher standard for what they were putting out on digital storefronts. Speaking of which, Mario and Donkey Kong minis on the move. Easily the best Mario versus Donkey Kong game outside of the first one and Donkey Kong 94. Uh, just because they did something different. Uh, they removed verses from the title. They're not absolutely pissed off at each other in this game. I don't know why. I think they just changed the title because it wasn't like a traditional Mario versus Donkey Kong game. Because uh, the traditional ones at that point were just, you know, the 2D games where you click on mini Marios and, and they move automatically. And, you know, you have to kind of manipulate the environment to get them to a certain goal. 
This one is similar, but played, you know, from more of an overhead perspective in 3D and uh, they move automatically, but you have to move the correct pieces onto the plane uh, to guide them in the correct way. It's pretty much like Pipe Dream on the Game Boy. Uh, I, I assume most people know Mario and Donkey Kong Minis on the move in comparison to Pipe Dream, but yeah, it's like Pipe Dream. I thought this was great. This was a fun game, and it was definitely a lot better than the regular Mario vs. Donkey Kong games. In contrast, Kersploosh. Uh, Kersploosh definitely felt more like a WiiWare DSiWare game. Uh, this was published by Nintendo as well, and it's pretty much just throwing rocks down a well. That's it. Uh, you get to pick which different types of rocks or balls or or whatever you want to throw it on the well. You get to pick whichever you want, and, uh, you know, they all have different kind of consistencies and speeds and weights, all that. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are a couple different stages where there's different uh, things on your way down to the well. Uh, it's very simple. I played it for a bit. It was pretty cheap, so, it, you know, it's not bad. It's just kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's Kersploosh. Moving on, Harmonite. This was my favorite eShop game for a while there. It's a rhythm platformer made by Game Freak, uh, who, you know, developed Pokemon. And uh, I remember specifically during my grocery store job, there was somebody that was asking me, it's just like, ah, you know, hey, Scott, have you ever played Pokemon? I'm like, I played one game from the people that made Pokemon. And, and I said it was Harmonite. Never talked to them again after that. But I thought this was a really fun game, pretty much like I said, rhythm platformer, where it's a platformer and you jump and you have to hit, you know, to the beat. Uh, pretty much. I played it again recently. Uh, it doesn't hold up as well as I remember it. it doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it's it's even not good or, or mediocre or anything. It's just, you know, like it, it just didn't hold up as well as I really wanted it to. I remember a reviewer saying at the time, like, uh, yeah, for a rhythm game, uh, this, this game has like no memorable tunes. And uh, yeah, I agree. After playing it again recently, uh, yeah, the, the songs are pretty weak in this one, which is which is kind of depressing considering, uh, you know, it's all about music. But still, pretty good game. I would love to see this return in some way. Next up is Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. I just realized the pun like a little bit ago, why it's called Real Deal. So the deal with this game is that it was a free-to-play game that you just download. And, uh, you know, you talk to Rusty, a dog. He owns a baseball shop who starts to sell video games and you can haggle with him. And it's kind of like an Ace Attorney-esque puzzle where you're haggling with him to try to get, uh, you know, the price of games down because you want to buy a video game. And, uh, you know, he'll sell it for like four bucks. But then, you know, you start talking him up. You start making him feel good about himself. And then he'll cut you a deal more and more and more. And, you know, they'll tell you in the game. They'll be like, hey, I think this is where he's... Uh, you know, I think this is as far as he's gonna go. And, uh, yeah, you know, since it's a free-to-play game, those games cost real money. So you are haggling for that game's real-world price, which is honestly pretty damn cool. And the games themselves, they're very simple. They're basically just little uh, arcade-type baseball-related games. You know, it's not specifically, oh, you're playing baseball. It's more so, like, hey, here's a game where you want to hit the baseball with your bat at the correct time. It's almost more of, like, a timing-based game a rhythm game sometimes and it's very simple but very arcadey and i really like the uh real world cost element i think it's really cool and fun and even then you know the starting price of most of those games it isn't that bad so it's just like even if you didn't want to haggle you just look at you're just pushing everything through it's just like i just want to play the games i think it was like four bucks a pop for each game you know, I, I, I would be okay with that. These these are fun to go through and uh, try to get a high score on. And uh, I thought I thought the whole story element was really fun and cool. You know, I just, I just, I really like this one. Uh, moving on, we have 3D Classics Excite Bike. This is the first uh, game that I ever got with my 3DS. Unfortunately, uh, this was available for free uh, when the eShop launched for the 3DS, which the eShop launched in like, June of 2011, so like two months after it initially launched. But this was available from the very start, and it was for free for a little bit. Uh, I got my 3DS at the exact wrong time, and I had to pay for this because I didn't get it in time. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't regret that at all. I think 3D Classic Excite Bike was more than worth like six dollars, seven dollars, however much it was. But yeah, I have the other 3D Classics games. I have 3D Classics Xevious, 3D Classics Urban Champion, and 3D Classics. Uh, Kirby's Adventure. I got uh, those, though. Uh, I, I skipped out on Kid Icarus and Twinbee. And I already made a Scott the Waz episode about the 3D Classics line. Uh, it was really cool, though. Uh, definitely didn't live up to the potential of, uh, 
you know, what it could have been. It felt like it was very odd, uh, odd games for them to, to pick for this. So they pretty much went in and they remade these games from the ground up while keeping all the sprite art, all the feel, you know, it, it was pretty much the exact same game, but most of these games were in widescreen, you know, in stereoscopic 3D, which was really cool. But then later on, you know, they kind of just got rid of the widescreen. They, they kind of started, stopped doing that. And, uh, you know, they, they kept like a game like Kirby's Adventure in 4x3. They kept uh, Twin B and uh, Kid Icarus in 4x3. Uh, it just kind of felt like they kind of gave up on a lot of this. And the games they picked, I, I just don't really think benefit from 3D. Kirby's Adventure is really cool to get in 3D, but it doesn't benefit from it. Same with Urban Champion. Uh, Excite Bike, you know, probably benefits more than the other games, and so does Xevious. But yeah, this was a really cool line of games Nintendo did. I just wish they, they did more of them and, and that they picked different games. But uh, yeah, th this was very much prominent throughout the launch year of the 3DS and into 2012. But where Nintendo slacked, Sega picked up with uh, the Sega 3D Classics line. So Sega did very similar things, but with their own games. Uh, and uh, the only one I got was the original Sonic the Hedgehog, 3D Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, yeah, it's Sonic 1 uh, with a couple little enhancements. Not in widescreen, but it's in 3D. Ooh, that's so damn cool. Yay, 3D Sonic. Uh, I didn't play this one a super ton, but Sonic 1 was one of my childhood games. You know, like when you re-release it, I'm, I might pick it up. There, there's a solid chance I will. I'd say it's it's close to 50-50 chance I'll pick it up, maybe a little less because, you know, I'm, I'm not in the mood all the time, but I might pick it up later down the road if I'm just feeling a little, a little sad enough. Colors 3D. Uh, I had a lot of fun memories of this one. This was a drawing application for the 3DS where you could actually create 3D art, and I remember drawing a lot on here just for fun. Uh, I remember tracing the, the Mario 3D Land box art randomly and trying to turn that into 3D and just doing my own little original doodles and all of that. Yeah, just a really fun little art application. Uh, Bird Mania 3D. Uh, this was kind of just a big title just for the fact that it was so cheap. It was like two bucks. Like, I think it made headlines just because it's just like, hey, do you really want a super cheap 3DS game? Here you go. It's fine. It's, it was pretty much just an endless runner type game, but instead, you know, where you're just a bird just moving up and down, up and down, um, you know, just trying to avoid things. Pretty much like a precursor to Flappy Bird, but you know, this, this ain't Flappy Bird. This is Bird Mania, bitch. Uh, yeah, I got the Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures. This was super exciting when that came out, just to see uh, a YouTube series that I watched get a video game. That was incredible. Uh, it was PC only at launch, but then it got a release on Wii U and eventually 3DS. Uh, randomly enough, seeing it on 3DS was, was definitely just bizarre to me. Like, I, I picked this up, I think I picked this up later down the line, just because, like, I just wanted to experience this game on 3DS, seeing this on a 3DS screen. There is just something more surreal about that compared to seeing it on, like, a Wii U, because, you know, that's just on your TV. Uh, you know, a 3DS screen, that's just weirder, so, uh, I picked this up. Uh, it's a pretty good game. You know, kind of old school, retro hard, uh, nothing too crazy, but, uh, also just, you know, kind of a, just a really cool little retro game. Swap No, I gotta be honest, I experienced nothing of Swap No. I did nothing with Swap No. It was, it was free, so, so I downloaded it, so that, that's why that's there. Uh, same with Nintendo Zone. It was free. I believe this was kind of just a setup where if you download a Nintendo Zone, you could go into certain stores, and, uh, you know, if those stores have Nintendo Zone set up, then you could download, like, demos or, or free content for some games or whatnot. Uh, Pokedex 3D, this was another free game. Uh, I really like this because of how high quality the 3D models looked on the 3DS, and they're still using these damn 3D models in Pokemon games to this day. The Super Smash Brothers for 3DS demo. I was very lucky to get this one. Uh, Nintendo sent out to s a select Club Nintendo members uh, access to the demo for Smash 3DS. It wasn't available to everybody right away. Uh, you know, you had to uh, get an email specifically from Nintendo, from Club Nintendo, saying like, hey, here's the demo for Smash 3DS. And you also got, you know, like a couple other codes for friends. Man, like this was so cool to experience. I love Smash 3DS. Uh, Obviously, Smash Wii U is the one that, you know, prefer to play, and, and I definitely played more. However, um, the, you know, Smash 3DS is one that I look back on, like, a, a bit more fondly, just in terms of just how cool it was, and just, you know, sitting in my room playing through Smash Run in classic mode numerous times, just trying to collect all those trophies. 
on the 3DS, it was just so cool. And that demo releasing was so exciting. And, and it was really telling to just see how well Smash Brothers worked on the 3DS. Uh, I saved a lot of these things. Uh, Nintendo would release trailers on the 3DS for free that you, you would download. You wouldn't just watch on the eShop. Uh, they kind of just did, the, I, I believe they just do that now, at, at least like they used to when, when they would put out trailers on the eShop, but they would pretty much just have most of the trailers stream like, like a YouTube link um, to the eShop, but they would also do this sometimes where you could just straight up download the trailer to your system. I believe an upside of this was that a lot of these trailers, if not all of them potentially, uh, were in 3D. So you could actually see how the 3D looked and you could view the 3D trailer on your 3DS. So I have Mario 3D Land here. I have Mario Kart 7. Uh, I have Luigi's Mansion 2. I really liked uh, saving a lot of these because so many of them have like the original title for these games, uh, you know, back when they had preliminary logos and working titles. So this is when Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, at least here in North America, was just called Luigi's Mansion 2. Uh, also, uh, here's Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D uh, when it had an older logo. The newer logo has like a, you know, a red ball with, with yellow text uh, in there. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds when it was just called, you know, The Legend of Zelda for 3DS. The, uh, Paper Mario Sticker Star when it was just called Paper Mario. Mario Tennis Open when it was just called Mario Tennis. And Animal Crossing New Leaf when it was just called Animal Crossing. So I liked saving those just because, you know, I get sentimental. And then we have some video apps here. We have Nintendo Video, which uh, housed a bunch of exclusive stuff. I believe they had like random uh, shorts from like College Humor. They had like a couple other random series that would debut on Nintendo Video. It was neat because, you know, it was 3D video. So a lot of this stuff that Nintendo put out, you know, really did emphasize the 3D. Uh, but eventually they just kind of stopped doing it because, you know, like it's just, what do you gain from that? I think it got to a point where Nintendo just gave up on anything but just making games for the 3DS. Uh, Cause you know, Nintendo Video went down, you know, like, uh, I don't know, it only went down like a couple years into the 3DS, I believe. But we also have Netflix and YouTube. Uh, I just like dicking around with these on the 3DS. Again, it's kind of like the ABGN Adventures thing where uh, it's not so much that I really want to use this on 3DS, it's more so I just want to see what a YouTube video on 3DS looks like. And then uh, these things were kind of just like stuff that I bought more recently. Uh, a lot of times when I'm doing videos, sometimes I, I want to show like a game running on maybe like, you know, like this, uh, this 3DS. Um, so, you know, I'll buy them again on, on my personal 3DS, but, uh, Picross E, I believe I bought just because, you know, I wanted it. I love Picross games. Uh, you don't need to buy all the Picross games. Picross isn't a, isn't a series you need to, you need to keep up with, but I just wanted a regular Picross game. So I picked up Picross E. I don't have any opinion of it other than it's Picross, uh, much like how I, I don't have much opinion on like Picross S on the Switch. It, it, it's Picross. They're all Picross. It, it's a fun little puzzle game. That's it. Uh, what I actually would have more of an opinion on is Twilight Princess Picross. This was an award or a reward they gave away uh, for my Nintendo. This was when my Nintendo was actually kind of cool at first. Now this was the replacement to Club Nintendo and it had big shoes to fill. And uh, you know, they were like, hey, we'll offer you an exclusive game, Picross. Zelda Twilight Princess. This came out around the time of Twilight Princess HD. Uh, and it's definitely made on a cheaper budget. There's not as much going on with this one, but it's still pretty cool. It's an exclusive game. It's, it's Picross, but with Twilight Princess. I really like that they actually did that. And similar thing uh, with my Nintendo, uh, or I believe this was Club Nintendo, uh, Flipnote Studio 3D. Actually, I believe it was Club Nintendo and my Nintendo. I believe this was a reward given out like when uh, Club Nintendo was shutting down, but then they they also offered Flipnote Studio 3D um, for my Nintendo users. Uh, yeah, I absolutely adored the original Flipnote Studio on DSiWare, and yeah, they announced Flipnote Studio 3D, where it was easy, free animation software uh, for your 3DS, but you can make 3D video, um, and uh, they never released it over here. I forget like th the thing of like why they never released it over here but they just didn't. It only came out in Japan and, and Nintendo just kind of like gave it very, very lacking support. I forget exactly what happened, but uh, something did and uh, they just never released it over here until 
Club Nintendo was shutting down and my Nintendo was a thing, they offered Flipnote Studio 3D. It's very limiting. I don't think there's a lot of sharing functionality in here, but it's cool that it came out. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't play it all too much because uh, it came out a little too late for me to care. And also, uh, there wasn't uh, the features that I really wanted in there. Uh, and then these were actually the games that I kind of bought as more of like a, uh, you know, bought for videos, um, played them for videos. Uh, Cheap Robo Photo Finder, Kid uh, 3D Classics Kid Icarus, and 3D Classics Twin B. Um, you know, as much as uh, Photo Finder is pretty cool, uh, I didn't play it uh, back when it first launched in 2014. Uh, same with 3D Classics Kid Icarus and Twin B. And then this is something that was pretty much on everybody's 3DS, was uh, Nintendo pretty much like downloaded demos for Planet Robobot and uh, Tomodachi Life to everybody's systems. Uh, so, you know, I can't do anything about it other than delete them, but uh, I'll humor them. I'll keep them there. Next up, we have DSiWare, which is, uh, you know, a fair amount of titles. Uh, this was just a lot of stuff from like back when I, uh, you know, had a DSi. These were these were games that I liked back then. Uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong Minis March Again. I don't believe I had this game on my DSi, or I might have. I forget. Damn, but, uh, you know, either way, this is pretty much just kind of a uh, another variant of Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, which I already had. Uh, and this is pretty much just a DSiWare version of that, where it's just, you know, hey... <laughs> Here it is on your system, go nuts. Photo Dojo, absolutely adored, it was pretty much just a very simple fighting game where you could take pictures of uh, yourself or other people and put yourself in a little fighting game. Love that. Uh, art style Picto Bits, that was a Club Nintendo reward. Uh, Club Nintendo offered some digital games that you could uh, re uh, redeem with your Club Nintendo points. And uh, yeah, I picked this one up. Um, didn't get super into it, mainly because uh, I was super dumb and uh, I just, never took the time to actually learn how to play it uh, because you know it's a puzzle game that involves like a lot of 8-bit Nintendo sprites and uh, you know I I, I just I, I gave up after trying it when I was like you know like probably like 15 so I'll definitely have to try it again but uh, yeah I never I never actually learned how to play that one uh, Game & Watch Mario Simon Factory uh, I remember I got that just just because like I, I, I was feeling it <laughs> I was feeling like getting a cheap DSiWare game and uh, yeah, DSiWare had a couple of Game & Watch games re-released onto it. Pretty neat. Cut the Rope, uh, that was pretty cool to see. Uh, that was like one of my favorite mobile games from back in the day. And like nobody else in, in, in real life, like people that I talk to in person say that, say the same thing. They're always like, oh, yeah, I didn't give a shit about that one. I'm like, God damn it. It was like the best one. It was really damn good. If Nintendo made it and they put it out on the DS, everybody would have been like, oh my God, I love this game. Just cause it's a mobile game. You don't think it's very good. This is an awesome little puzzle game. I love this game. And uh, I got it on uh, DSiWare. Uh, through my 3DS, uh, this was uh, a game that came out in like late 2011, and uh, I picked it up on the 3DS eShop, but it's a DSiWare game. Um, but I played it through that just because I, I just, I thought it was really cool that they put it out on a uh, DSiWare or 3DS. And we have Dr. Mario Express, a very simple Dr. Mario game, pretty much a DSiWare version of the WiiWare title, Dr. Mario Online RX. You know, I got, I got, I got nothing really about that one. I, I got nothing to really say about it other than like, it, it's Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario without multiplayer, if you will. So, you know, it's, it's fine, but it's just like, how far is fine gonna take you? Mario Calculator. Uh, so Nintendo put out a lot of this trash on DSiWare. Uh, they just put out like Mario Calculator, Animal Crossing Calculator, N N Mario Clock, Animal Crossing Clock. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, fine, I'll get one of them. And yeah, I got Mario Calculator because that was the coolest one. They have a couple cool things in there where you can like translate, like, I don't know, like, things to dog years or something <laughs> like i i thought that was pretty cool how they had a lot of different like measurements of things you could do and uh just you know uh inputting stuff on the calculator and hearing the 8-bit mario sounds was pretty neat definitely way better value than the clock the clock was a ripoff i will say that right now anybody who got a clock i'm sorry you're a fool and you should know that by now the legend of zelda four swords anniversary edition that was free for a little bit until they just took it out uh of the eShop entirely like you just can't get this anymore um, and, uh, yeah, I like this. It was, it was free. It was just free. So I'm just like, yeah, of course I got it. And, uh, th I'm very thankful I did because, you know, you, you can't get, you couldn't get this on the eShop after, after they took it down. Uh, I believe these two I bought for video purposes. So Shantae Risky's Revenge and Flight Control. 
uh, you know, I wish I got those back in the day because, you know, they're, they're good games, but, uh, you know, uh, I bought those uh, more recently for video stuff. Uh, but WarioWare touched. Uh, this was also a My Nintendo reward. I just found this very odd. Like, it was a full retail Nintendo DS game that Nintendo offered as a digital download for My Nintendo users as, like, a reward uh, for, for getting enough points. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's classified as, like, a DSiWare game on, like, the, the 3DS's operating system, which, which I just found very, very odd. And it's specifically called, like, WarioWare Touch DL, like, downloaded. So, like, I'm like, okay. But, yeah, those are all my DSiWare games. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting to the end here. Uh, specifically, we got the NES games. Um, yeah, I pretty much just got these six. These, these were the six that I had. Uh, Clue Clue Land, I bought later. For business purposes. But yeah, I have Mario 1, Mario 2 The Lost Levels, Mario 2 USA, Mario 3, Mega Man 2, and Punch-Out. Uh, you know, you gotta have the, uh, the OG 8-bit Mario games. I actually remember, uh, Mario 1 on the 3DS. That was the way I initially, uh, beat Mario 1 for the first time. Uh, and, you know, these games I just always want to have, you know, just at a moment's notice. They're just fun to pick up and play, you know, it's something where you're just kind of feeling it. You're just like, you know what, I want to play Mario 3 again. You know, hey, it's, it's great to have it on the 3DS. But, uh, you know, I love Mega Man 2, and I absolutely love Punch-Out. Punch-Out is probably one of my favorite NES games. Uh, and, you know, I just wanted to be able to play it at a moment's notice. Same with Mega Man 2. And, uh, yeah, other than that, didn't do a ton of, like, NES stuff. I think I was just a little burnt out on buying NES games, like, through the virtual console. I already bought enough of them on Wii and Wii U, so it's just like, you know... Uh, 3DS, I think I was kind of buying the ones that I knew specifically, like, I want to play that on the go. SNES here, uh, yeah, I think I only bought this for, uh, video work, um, you know, so I, I, I bought this, I believe I was doing the Virtual Console episode of Scott the Waz, so I needed to show, like, you know, an SNES game on th new 3DS, so I got, I got a link to the past, you know, yeah, it's great game I, you know why not but no i never actually bought an snes game for the 3ds in its heyday um you know i've played snes games on 3ds they're really cool on 3ds uh they look really crisp and it's just it's cool to see them on the 3ds screen but uh yeah back in like the heyday before the nintendo switch i never got snes games on the 3ds they launched in like 2016 and that was when i was like i don't care like you waited too long and they were new 3ds only i was just like i Piss off. But the main thing I really got a ton of, Game Boy. I got so much Game Boy stuff here. So I have the Mario Land games, Mario Land 1, 2, and Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Um, absolutely love Mario Land 1. I remember I played this at like my parents' friend's boathouse or, or like house, like that they, that they at least had like nearby like a lake or something. The lake house, there you go, ooh. And uh, yeah, it was, I just remember laying on the couch. They didn't really have a ton of technology going on there, like not a ton going on with their TV, not a ton going on with like the internet situation. And uh, yeah, my parents were just kind of talking to their friends for a while. So, uh, you know, I was done I was done at the lake for the day. I was done being outside. I was just kind of hanging out on the couch and I just blasted through Mario Land 1. You can critically rip this game apart, but it is just so charming and just so cozy to play. Like, it's fun to just have a game to just blow through at a moment's notice. And, and Mario Land is, is one of those games for me. Uh, same with Mario Land 2. I beat this. Uh, this just reminds me of, like, the holidays. I don't know why. Because Mario Land 2 just feels very holly and jolly. And I believe I beat it around the holidays. Uh, you know, I just remember staying up late and, you know, just being nice and warm in my bed and just, and just playing through and, uh, you know, beating Wario on that last stage. Um, I don't know. I just, you know, I love Mario Land too. I think people constantly, uh, kind of overpraise it a little too much. I think, I think it's kind of a little overpraised because like, oh, it's a cool looking Mario game on the, on the Game Boy. But, you know, I think if it was on any other platform, it, it wouldn't be like that special. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not one to say that because I still really like it because it's a Game Boy game and it's cool and, it, and it's really fun. Uh, so yeah, it's Mario Land 2. I really like Mario Land 2. Uh, Wario Land, I never really got super into, but I have it. Donkey Kong 94, I love Donkey Kong 94. So many of, like, my initial 3DS memories, uh, really had to do with, like, the Game Boy games I downloaded on here. I loved playing these Game Boy games on the 3DS, and Donkey Kong 94 was one that, you know, I discovered on the 3DS Virtual Console, and it is, like, my favorite Game Boy game. It is so damn good. Mario's Picross, that was where I initially discovered my love for Picross. 
Um, again, there's just something about it where just the sound effects and visuals of clearing those pit cross puzzles, just like nailing down a piece on that pit cross grid just feels really satisfying in this game. I don't know why, but like I just got lost in this game for a while. Tetris. Now, this is a cool one. They delisted this one uh, a while in, um, mainly because, you know, Tetris, Nintendo doesn't own the Tetris name or brand. You know, they had to license it from the Tetris company. But I believe around like Christmas time of 2011, they put Tetris out uh, on the Game Boy Virtual Console. And uh, yeah, it was really cool that they did. I love this version. It's just such a simple version of Tetris, but there's a reason it was so popular. There's a reason it stood the test of time. And then we have Kirby's Dream Land, a classic, not one that I really have to go back to uh, all too much though. Uh, I beat this one on uh, Kirby's Dream Collection. Uh, I might have beat it on here first, and then I beat it on like Kirby's Dream Collection on Wii. I remember I was getting footage of it on like Kirby's Dream Collection for Wii, like for a Scott the Waz episode. And I just, I just blaze right through it. You can beat this game in like 30, 30 minutes. So yeah, probably not the best value to buy this on the 3DS, because it was probably like like four or five bucks um, and just blasting through it in 30 minutes. Uh, you know, whatever, but hey, you know, hey, it's Kirby. It's a classic. Metroid 2, I, I got nothing for Metroid 2. I bought it and I think I tried it out a little bit on 3DS, but like, man, like I, I needed, I needed a little more of a guide for it. Um, and you know, I definitely got that later on. I tried it again later on and I, I've grown a lot more uh, appreciative towards the Metroid series, especially after, you know, I beat Zero Mission and, and Dread and, you know, I tried out all the other games. Um, but Metroid 2 is definitely, it's definitely a little, little stinky to go back to a lot of the time. Omega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge. I uh, played this one a lot. Really like this one. It's just a cool little kind of like weird alternate reality version of like Mega Man 1. You know, black and white, uh, you know, bigger sprites, but you know, still kind of classic Mega Man. And, uh, and it, it's really cool to go back to it. It was just really cool to just see all these Game Boy games again, because, you know, they, they got, they never really got a lot of love in terms of re-releases, because most of the time, if they would re-release anything, they would re-release the NES games or the SNES games, and it was really cool to get these versions re-released. Uh, but I got the other Mega Man games, Mega Man 2, uh, 3, 4, oh man, I don't even, I don't have Mega Man V? 5? Mega Man 5 was like the best one on Game Boy, apparently, I never played it, but, um, yeah, I think I got these because, like, Capcom, I remember they were kind of doing, like, a big Mega Man Game Boy sale on the 3DS Virtual Console at some point, so I, I got all these. But uh, I don't really think I played uh, any any of these on 3DS past uh, Dr. Wily's, Wily's Revenge uh, all too much. Uh, then we have Balloon Kid, uh, you know, the N Nintendo game, uh, you know, basically balloon fight, but on the Game Boy, uh, but more so focused on like balloon trip mode where, you know, it's kind of just an auto scroller where you're just trying to avoid all the obstacles. Uh, you know, decent amount of fun. Uh, kicks, I really like kicks, uh, pretty much just where you're trying to create completed shapes where, uh, you know, you just complete, you know, like a square, or you just, you know, you just complete part of the screen and you just want to complete the majority of the screen before that little, you know, that little thing catches up to you. I think it's a really fun and addictive little, little action puzzle game. Uh, golf, I don't really think I played much golf. Uh, Avenging Spirit, I don't really think I played much Avenging Spirit. Some of these I just kind of got because I had 3DS eShop funds left over. So I was just like, oh yeah, sure. I'll get another Game Boy game. And uh, it just had to be Avenging Spirit, apparently. Uh, same with Pac-Man. I mean, I mean, like, I, I, I like Pac-Man quite a lot, but um, you know, it's Game Boy Pac-Man. I don't know what else there is to say about it. Uh, but then we have uh, Burger Time Deluxe. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of charming to play these arcade games in, in Game Boy form, honestly. Like, I, I do kind of like, I did kind of like that. Like, I, I do remember playing these a, a bit more than, uh, you know, Avenging Spirit. Then we have a Game & Watch Gallery. I had a ton of fun with that. Pretty much just, uh, you know, remaking classic Game & Watch games with Mario characters uh, to showcase them in like new contexts. While also having the original uh, Game & Watch games available in like their LCD glory. Uh, you know, that Game & Watch Gallery, it's really great. After that, we have Game Boy Color. Not a ton of stuff. I have Link's Awakening, Mario Golf, and Toki Tori. Uh, I believe I got Mario Golf because I remember like IGN gave that like a 10 out of 10. I was just like, I have to see what the fuss is about. And I tried it and I was just like, it's definitely a Game Boy Color Golf game. But Link's Awakening, I definitely played a lot more. I uh, didn't get far in it. Um, you know, I definitely didn't understand classic Zelda back then. But, uh, you know, I played this uh, definitely a, a decent amount on, on 3DS. And uh, Toki Tori, I think I got that on sale. 
uh, you know, and uh, I also wanted to see because Toki Tori was kind of a big name during the Wii U eShop days because they had Toki Tori 2 come out on there and the remade Toki Tori, uh, you know, so I wanted to see where the origins were, but I never really played this version. Uh, and that's pretty much everything that's on my 3DS. Um, there is um, Animal Crossing Calculator and photos with Mario, but I mainly got those afterwards for video stuff. You know, when I was filming stuff, I needed to uh, show those on the 3DS, so downloaded it on here. Uh, and then other than that, uh, the health and safety information. Which I can either talk about that or the change size option for the next 20 minutes. What would you prefer?